Body. Feel like preaching. Amen. Amen. I feel like preaching on today because, see, I know that I have something to say that the enemy didn't want me to say. You're right. Threw me on the floor last night. Mm -hmm. Thought I was going to hurt myself so I couldn't preach. But see, we all know that the devil is a liar. Yes, Amen. he is. Amen. Amen. So I'm here today to bring you this message that the Lord has given to me, and I, I believe it is a very timely word today. Um, our text will be taken out of the book of Revelation. And that's the book where everybody gets a little, you know, because it is of the last things. But um, this message is anything other than, ooh, yeah. amen. And the title of my message is The I Wills of Christ. Christ. Amen. 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 Now, we read this morning from Revelation chapter 3 verses 1 through 22. But for your hearing here, I'm just going to read the last three verses, which is Revelation chapter 3, and we're going to read from 20, I can get out of the dictionary, we're going to read from 20 <laughs> to 22, amen? Amen. Amen. So this is what I'm going to read in your hearing. And this is Jesus speaking. We know that it's Jesus because it's all red letter. Yes. Amen. Amen. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes... I will grant to sit with me on my father on my throne, and also I, as I also overcame and sat down on my father's throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Lord's word is blessed on today. Amen. And may you find the ears of those who need to hear it in the name of Jesus. And so by way of introduction, I'm just going to kind of get into this. We know that the promises of our Lord are steadfast and sure. Amen. Always. We know that it's God's will for men and women to receive his righteous promises. For he is not willing, he tells us, that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. Yes. Now, when one repents of his sins and accepts Christ as their Savior, he's able to receive the exceeding great and precious promises of the Lord. Amen. 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 I want you to understand this morning that Jesus does not deal in alternatives. No, he doesn't. Amen. Right. His promises and his commandments yes. are both clear and direct. Mm -hmm. yes. The Bible declares that Abraham staggered not at the promise of God, mm -hmm. but was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Also in Psalms 84, verse 11, the Bible says, No good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Gospels and the book of Revelation, we will observe the life and ministry of Christ, his teachings, and his sayings. We must understand that his words are not empty. Amen. Right. Matthew recorded this in his seventh chapter, verses 28 through 29, that the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In the words that Jesus spoke, men find deliverance and hope. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Jesus had a lot of things that he spoke about. And there's one section where in John, Jesus tells us everything that he is. Amen. He says, I am the bread of life. Yes. I am the door. Mm -hmm. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Okay. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. shepherd. Mm -hmm. And he says, I am 
the true vine. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Those are Jesus' seven I am statements. But we're not looking at I am this morning. We're looking at I will. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. We're looking at his promises to us. Yes. Now, I understand before I get started that this is not going to be an exhaustive list of I, I, I wills yes. because we would be here until next week. Yes. <laughs> but I'm going to give you some that just really jumped out at me. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they yes. are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. We're not preaching the letter of the law up in here this morning because the Bible tells us the letter of the law kills. Mm -hmm. But the words of God give life. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul confirmed this in his own life by saying, for me to live is Christ. But to die. And to die is yeah, gain. Yes. Amen? Right. Many times in his sayings and promises, Jesus used the expression, I will. Mm -hmm. This statement conveys an assurance and a dependability on all that he has spoken. Amen? Right. These I wills of Christ are given to all believers and will ultimately be received by those who are faithful. Mm -hmm. Notice I didn't say the leadership of the church or the deacons or the... No, all believers can take hold of the promises of God. And I have said to you from this desk more than once, we must meet the conditions of the promise. God is going to do his part. Yes, we got to do our part. But we got to do our part. He's not the one-armed bandit where you go and you put the quarter in and it comes out. There's stuff we have to do, amen? Amen. amen. But every single promise belongs to us. And there's over 3,500 promises in the Word of God. That's a lot of promises. Yeah. But God said he will. And he shall. Yes. Amen. Amen. And since he is not a, a man that he should lie, we can take that to the bank. I believe my brother preached one time about checks and the bank. And the signature that's on the check that God gives us is good. good. Amen. 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 We don't have to worry about his checks bouncing, that's for sure. Amen. Amen. Everyone uses the expression, I will. I've done it. You've done it. We've all done it. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. And when we say, I will, we intend, for the most part, to keep our promise. Is that correct? Yes. Amen. Take, for instance, you might say to a person, I'll see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. You may have every intention of fulfilling your promise, right. your I will. Mm -hmm. But because of some unfortunate or unseen circumstance, you may not be able to do so. You see, we as humans are limited, and we can be prevented from carrying out our plans, our activities, and our commitments. Amen? Right. Yeah. Uh, in comparison to Jesus the Christ, who is all truth, we can see that Satan is a liar. Right, he is. Amen? Yes, he is. And we can also attest to him that he is the father of lies. Yes. Do you know when Satan rebelled in heaven? He was not tempted to do so. See, when we sin, it's usually because a temptation comes. Right. Who tempted Satan? Nobody. Excuse me, Lucifer. So he had this already harbored in him. He was hardwired wow. to sin. Wow. His job was to stand before the heavenly choir and receive the worship of the angels and reflect it back to God. When you read the description, his body was all reflective, and when he moved, he played music. He was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, but when they started singing to him, one day he decided he liked it a lot. Take the glory for himself. And I, I like this. I like them doing this for me. Mm -hmm. And he decided that he was going to rebel. Why should God get all of this? Yeah. And no, no, don't take no. him lightly because he convinced a third of the angels in heaven to, do it. to go with him knowing that he was wrong. Mm. So don't think you're so smart when the enemy comes up to you. Because I know many times I can only speak for me. I know what I'm getting ready to do is wrong. Mm -mm. Do it anyhow. My God. Just like that. And in that moment, I have taken the glory away from God. Yes. So we can see in our own lives how it's possible. Yes, it is. But see, God didn't make a way of escape for him. Nope. Huh? Because he didn't need, need to. to. No. 
But the word is clear that when we find ourselves in a place where we shouldn't be, God has made a, a way, way of, of escape. escape. You see, he doesn't tempt anybody. Right. Satan is the tempter. Right. But God says, if you look, I got a way for you to get out, get of, out it of it if you want to get out. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. You can't say, oh, you know, I got trapped. I, I couldn't see my way out of it. Now you're talking like your father, the devil. My God. My God. My God. There's always a way of escape. Amen. Right. So we know that in comparison to Jesus, Satan is a liar. And everybody that lies, they show the tendencies of their father. You see, Satan tries to mimic all that God has done. His ultimate goal, brothers and sisters, is deception. Yes, it is. This is why you've got to know this word. Right. Because he can bring you close enough till it looks like the real deal. Right. And only after you step off the edge do you find out, oops, that wasn't it. Amen? Right. His job, his ultimate goal is deception. Before his fall, Lucifer used the same expression, I will, to perpetrate his evil intentions. He had the nerve, the audacity to say in his heart, listen, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O oh, Lucifer, son of the morning? That's how bright he was. The morning star. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart. In thy heart. Uh, I want you to understand where I'm coming from. You don't have to say it out your mouth. Right. If it's in you, it's in you. Right. Right. In Amen. Heart, in and God knows the intentions of the heart. You never have to open your mouth. No. Lucifer said in his heart, the word said, I will ascend into heaven. Yes. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. My God. I will sit also upon the mount in the congregation and in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. My God. <laughs> in that moment, Isaiah goes on and he says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Five times in these scriptures, Lucifer used the term, I will. I will ascend, I will exalt, I will sit, I will ascend, and I will be. He actually believed that he could bring rebellion to pass. It's possible that he still believes, oh, glory to God. Mm. He still believes that he can succeed in his rebellion. My this is his job every day, to try to turn us away from the glory of God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. His sin can be summed up in two words, my brothers and sisters. Pride and rebellion. Oh, my. Pride and rebellion. Satan's I wills are based in deception and falsehood. His I wills are death and destruction. Remember, John wrote, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Yes. Amen. Every day. That's what he comes for. That's his purpose. Whoever he can get to go with him to the pit. Amen. All right. The promises and I wills of Jesus are very real. The promises and I wills of Jesus are given to every blood washed, blood bought, born again believer who has accepted his grace. Okay. Amen. All right. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 24, it is written, Faithful is he that calleth you who also doeth it. Mm. Faithful is he. Jesus is faithful. If he called you to do something and he said that you would do it, he will equip you to do it. You don't have to go into prayer. You don't have to go into fasting. When God says do, you don't have to take the whole lot of time thinking about it. Right. Who are you praying to? All right. If you get a word from the Lord to do something, please tell me who are you going to pray to? Okay? The author of the truth has spoken to you.
to you. Why? Well, well, I, I don't know. Because I, I got to pray about it because, you know, I had this on my schedule. You better lay it all aside and do what the Lord asked you to do. Amen? Mm -hmm. Nothing worse, my brothers and sisters, than being out of step with God. Oh, my. My. I just spoke the other week about doing the right thing the wrong way. Do you know you can do the right thing? Be out of time and miss your blessing. Mary, my God. And then you're walking around with your face all torn up because God didn't bless me. God didn't answer my prayer. Yeah, you weren't in lockstep with him. Right. You missed it. Amen? Right. And I've said from here before, sometimes God doesn't say yes. He doesn't. Sometimes he doesn't say maybe. Sometimes maybe. he doesn't answer. Sometimes he says no. Mm -hmm. And see, because we don't want to hear no, we walk around telling folks, oh, the Lord didn't answer my prayer. Yes, he did. He said no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no is an answer. Yes. And it's an anointing. Anointing answer. Amen. Okay? Yeah. That's just because you don't want to hear it. Oh, yeah. Yes, he did. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Water over there, brother. <laughs> Jesus said, Behold, look, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in right. to him. Thank you, Jesus. I will sup with, with him. him. Amen. All right. And he with me. Mm. It is up to man to open the door of his heart before Christ can perform his word. He's knocking. You hear it and you're too lazy to get up and open the door. Well, I'll let him come back tomorrow. You don't know if you have tomorrow. You better get up and answer the door. Mm. Amen. All right. Don't know about tomorrow. Mm, mm, mm. Note that some of the I wills with Jesus spoke as he ministered on the earth. To the leper in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 13, he said, I will. Because the question was asked before if he would be made clean, you know, and if Jesus could. And Jesus said, I will. I will. Be thou clean. Yes, he did. Amen. Yes, he did. To all who believed, he said, and this is the will of him who sent me. That everyone that seeketh the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up yes, he will. at the last day. Yes, he will. He will. He didn't say somebody else would. He said, I will. Praise God. Amen. And in his prayer for the disciples, he prayed, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. I will. I will. When Jesus was in the garden, sweating great drops of blood, because he knew what was coming, he was in his flesh. Don't let anybody fool you. Jesus was like, I don't want to do this, Father. If at all you can make this cup pass from me, let it pass. But nevertheless, your will. Jesus said he would that the cup would pass. But he was sent with instructions. And so he put his will to the side and followed the will of the Father. So none of us had to drink what was in that cup. Mm. Amen? Amen. Let's talk about the first very special I will. I picked out some that I thought were really special. The first I will is to all believers. It's for all of us. Amen? There are many I wills that Jesus spoke to the disciples and to all who will come to believe on his name and to know him. These special I wills give us a solid foundation for our Christian faith because they provide comfort, consolation, strength, and hope. 
The first I will of Christ for the believer is given in Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 through 9. And he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He is saying, give me your life as a yielded vessel, and I will make you what I desire you to be. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> there are a lot of truths in the saying we've heard. We've probably even said it ourselves. He's still working on me. Be patient. God is still working on me. And it's true. It's a lot of truth in that. Because after we're saved, we are still a rough copy of what God plans for us to be. You heard the phrase, the diamond in the rough? Mm -hmm. You still got to chip off some of that coal from the... Mm. Jesus. Mm. Jesus. You want to be a diamond? Okay. You got to start off as a lump of coal. Oh my God. What makes a diamond? Pressure. 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 Oh, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Yeah. We want to be God's best friend. We're going to have to deal with some pressure. Amen. Not just pressure, but some heat. Okay. And you got to be willing to stay in the fire. Bishop always talks about the Hebrew boys. They went in and the people that put them in there perished in the fire. My God. Because Nebuchadnezzar said, turn that joker up seven times hotter than usual since they don't want to bow down. And still they didn't bow because when he looked in there, they were walking to a fro in the heat. Sometimes you just got to deal with the heat. Mm. You want to be all that God called you to be? He's the master potter. If anybody knows anything about pottery, once you get that thing shaped up, you got to put it in a kiln. Mm. This big old hot up. I don't care what you do, you're going to get some heat. All right. Amen. Okay. You might as well kick back and get your glass of water and chill out. Mm -hmm. Until the fire is over, mm -hmm. amen? Right. Because if you want to do anything for God, he comes with it. Yes. Amen? Yes. But I, I heard in the, in the word that they didn't even feel the heat of the fire. And when they came out, their garments weren't singed, and they didn't even smell like smoke. So, hey, hallelujah. Amen. I can tell you right now, I don't look like what I've been through. No. And neither do you. All right. Amen. Right. You need to give God some praise no, on that. Praise his name. The Lord plans to use us. And after our conversion, let's take Paul. After his conversion, because you, you all know Paul, right? Mm -hmm. Paul was raising all kinds of ruckus and going after the Christians yes. because he felt that they were going against Judaism. And these Christians were converted Jews. And they were called believers in the way. That's where you hear Jesus say, I am the way. And they weren't even allowed to say the way. Oh, Paul didn't like them. You know, Paul was zealous in his work to put an end to this new religion they called Christianity. Mm -hmm. He didn't care man, woman, boy, or girl. He was going after them. Amen. Mm -hmm. But after his conversion, Paul was still far from being all that God had planned for him to be. You see, if we will just follow Jesus, he will make us into what he wants us to be. I need you to understand it's not about what you want. Jesus. I need to plant that firmly in your psyche today. God said in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, I know the, the plans plan. I have for you. Oh, yes. So how are you up making plans? Oh. Did you check God's plans first? No. Mm. You need to go say, Lord, I don't know what you had for me to do today, no. but sir, I would like to do so and so. Grant me your favor. Mm. Amen? Yeah. No, we don't do that. We just go plot along and do whatever it is we want to do. And then when things turn out, Jack, I don't understand why this didn't work. Did you ask God first? No. Mm. Usually, no. No. And then you want to go back later with an attitude. Mm. I made plans, I had it all together. This should have worked, yeah, but you did not include God. Jesus. We cannot leave God out of anything. Mm -hmm. Amen. My God. My God. The scripture 
tells us that we need to follow him because in 2 Peter verse 3, uh, chapter, excuse me, chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, but grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So no, you're not saved to know everything. You don't get an instant download. We learn as we go. We make mistakes. We fall down, but we get up. So all these folks looking at you, expecting you to be perfect, you can say, and God is not through with me yet. No. Now don't use that as a reason just to willfully go out and do wrong. Okay. But understand, it's a process. Your salvation is a process. Your sanctification is a process, which will be complete in the day of Jesus Christ. God said, he who has begun a good work in you shall continue. Until the day. Well, something's going on, isn't it? Right. You gotta allow yourself to go through the process. After you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, the road to heaven is a process. Amen. Mm -hmm. In this case, with the Apostle Peter, who was prejudiced against Gentiles until the Lord gave him a great vision from the roof of the house in Joppa, he was prejudiced against the Gentiles. God sent him to work with the Gentiles, and oh, he was okay until some Jews came around. Then he wanted to act like he didn't have anything to do with them. And Paul got there and had to tell him off. Paul said, I withstood him to his face. He was not doing what God had intended for him to do. We can't have prejudice and say we're doing what God wants us to do. We cannot alienate people with this gospel. I'm only taking the gospel to people that look like me or to people that speak the same language as I do or whatever. God said whosoever will, let them come. Guess what? You were in that whosoever will at one time. Amen. You. You were unlovable and ungodly. But somebody still spoke a word and planted a seed. Jesus. And here you are today. Yes. Praise God. Amen. You are saved. Thank you. It was not an easy thing for a Jew to go and preach to Gentiles. But the Lord made Simon Peter a willing messenger to the household of Cornelius. And Paul wrote about it. Paul said, being, com uh, being, being confident, confident of this very thing. Yes. He who hath begun a good work in oh, you, thank you will perform it until the day of Christ. Jesus will perform his work in us so that we may be able to conform to the image of the inner man. And the inner man is Jesus. We want to look like Jesus. Yes. Amen. When people see us, we want them to see the reflection of he who is the light. We are children of the light. Yes. I need to look like my dad. Yes, amen. We are his workmanship, mm. created in Christ unto good works, which God hath ordained, check this out, before we should walk in them. Mm -hmm. He already knew what you were going to do. He already knew what he called you to do. Yes. But here's the thing, he didn't force you to no, do it. No. He didn't squeeze you into the mold. He says, no, you're going to come because you want to come. Yes, voluntary. My God, he ordained before that we should walk in them. The second special I will relates to the church. This next I will, Jesus uttered, it is found in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And he said, And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I will yes. build my church. And the gates, and the gates of hell shall, shall not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord is saying two very important things right here. I want you to listen. He says, I will build my church. I don't care what we see on TV. I don't care how many people say that we believe in a fairy tale. I don't care how many people you know, just look down on their nose and that's because we are Christians. God said, I will build my church. And then he added something else. See all this stuff going on around us? He said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, we can tell the devil to go someplace to sit down. 
I don't care what he does. Unless you fall prey to him, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. You are the church. Catch it. He says, I will build my church. He's building it in you. And he's building it in you. And he's building it in me. And the gates of hell will not prevail against us. You all need to get together and understand what that means. Got it. We don't serve a God that issues out fear. If you got a spirit of fear, it's not God. Because he said the gates of hell will not, not prevail fear. against us. Oh. No. No. Glory to God. The devil can bring me anything he wants. And now I look at him and say, hmm, did you read? He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Yes. Amen? Yes. God said, if he comes, resist him, and he will flip. And come with a temptation. God said, I made a way for you to get out. God help me with this here. Mm. Mm, Jesus. The church is ordained by Christ to be the body which bears his identity and carry his light. Mm -hmm. The body of believers will be the vehicle to take the gospels to all the nations. Mm -hmm. The word says, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Right. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot, that's us, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that we should be holy and without blemish. He said that's what he wants to present to himself. Yes. Because we're his. In the beginning of John's gospel, it says everything that was made, he made. Mm -hmm. Everything. So when we read in Genesis 1 and 1, and the Lord said, Boom. when the word came forth, that was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. The word was Jesus. John said that Jesus was in the beginning. God spoke, and there he was. Mm -hmm. And when we stumbled and fell in the garden, God took a little bit of time and he sent the prophets to come and see if he could get the nations to follow him. And God said, you know what? I haven't found anybody. I got to swear by myself. And so he came manifest in the flesh and the words said, and tabernacle amongst us. We didn't even recognize who he was. We missed the visitation. Amen. Right. Thanks be to God that he has extended it so that we're now included. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not say the gates of hell would not come against the church. Okay? Don't get it twisted. He didn't say that. But that the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Amen. You might get knocked down, but you can get back up. Amen. She, the church, the bride, will be lied on. You will be maligned. You will be persecuted. You will be hated. You will be intimidated. You will be tried. But the church will live on. Amen. Amen. How many governments and kingdoms and organizations and powers have risen and fallen since Jesus made the statement, the gates of hell shall not prevail? But the church lives on. She has been through the flood. She has been through the fire. But one of these days, the church is going to move up higher. Hallelujah to right. God. Jesus will present unto himself a glorious church. Mm -hmm. The word church in the New Testament is taken from the Greek word ecclesia, which means called out ones. We've been called out. Called out of what? Called out of darkness. Called out of a definite seat in hell. Yes. Had your name on it. Mm -hmm. My God. Jesus said, they are not of the world, mm -hmm. even as I am not of the world. The church is that bright light beaming the message of Jesus Christ, who is the life of the church itself. Mm -hmm. 
third special I will. I hope you all sticking with me this morning and I'm not boring you. No. The next I will of Jesus is to equip believers to do his work on earth efficiently. Equip believers. Amen. We need to know how to do what we've been called to do. I'm not going to give you a hammer and you never held the hammer in your life and tell you to go over there and nail something. Because you will jack it up. That would be me. And yes. Don't give the pastor a paintbrush. Especially around your good furniture. Because he will knock the can of paint off as he falls and damage the furniture and get his little whatever. The lady was gracious. Because she paid him even though he came in there and tore up her antique chair. Uh, yeah, God was on your side that day. <laughs> <laughs> yes Jesus said I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever you see Jesus was on his way home and that was causing fear among the disciples and his followers he said no 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 don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever. There is no greater <coughs> consolation for the child of God than Christ promised to all believers that they can be filled with the Spirit. The Lord also said in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 18, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, mm -hmm. whom the world, the world cannot receive, nope. because it seeth him not. The world can't see Jesus. Nope. There was a time when you couldn't see Jesus, right. because you were of the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. You couldn't see Jesus in anything. Nobody could explain Jesus to you. They wanted to know why did you believe all these fairy tales. That's not true. Mm -hmm. And it's boring to boot. Mm, wow. Amen. That's when you're in the world. All right. You pick it up now. It's exciting. There's some stuff in here, boy. Whew. It put any daytime soap opera to shame. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we find in the word. There's all kinds of stuff going on in there. Amen. All right. He said, but even the spirit of truth whom the word cannot receive, but seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The disciples were told that they would enter a new dimension in the work of the spirit. The spirit had been with them. But in a few days, he would be in them right. to perform the work. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So he had to go. He said, it's expedient that I go so that I can send back another one like me. Jesus didn't say he was sending something different. He said, I'm going to send back one like me. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Oh, you know, because in his flesh, he couldn't be everywhere all at once. And we know that God is omnipotent. He's omnipresent. Amen. He, oh, he knows everything. Amen. Has all power. In his flesh, he couldn't be everywhere at once. Mm -hmm. But when he came back in the spirit, he can sit down on the throne of each and every one of our hearts. Mm -hmm. The same Holy Spirit. I don't have more than you. You don't have more than me. We all have the same Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So before you pick up the phone, I need you to pray. How about you pray for yourself first? How about you learn the voice of God and listen to what he has to say? Right. Now, if you need a mediator, by all means. Yes. But I'm only going to tell you what the Holy Spirit is going to tell you. Right. Amen. Because we started off with, let he who have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And as I said, you're in the church. Okay? Right. The Spirit is talking all the time. Yes, we just need to learn how to tune out all these other voices. Mm -hmm. Amen. It seems inconceivable that Christians would overlook the promise of the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the word declares, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is ex expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. 
So while on the earth with his apostles, Jesus was their strength. He was their consolation and comfort. He told them that he would go to the Father and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Yes. The term comforter in the original Greek is the parakletos and it means one who walks along with or beside. The strength of Jesus is in the heart of every spirit-filled believer. Mm -hmm. And this is the will of God. Every single one of us. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. The Lord was going to endow the believers with the ability to continue to shine brightly in a darkened world. Mm -hmm. He would finish the work he began by the power of the Holy Spirit who would fill the believer with divine power to complete the task. Mm -hmm. In Acts 1 and 8, Jesus said to the disciples, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Oh, you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. Right. We can't even be a witness for Christ without the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know how to act. With Christ, we can do all things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Wherever Jesus went, he faced difficulties. Anybody feel like that sometimes? Yes. And because he was still here in the flesh, he could only minister in one place at a time. When he could, he healed the sick, and he raised the dead, and he calmed the sea, and he fed the multitude, and he preached to those around him. He was concerned about mankind and was thinking of those who would be born in the ages to come. This world of which he speaks, he mentions 32 times. In John 15, 16, and 17, he had concerns about this world. The work of Christ must be carried out by who? By us, by the spirit-filled believers. He left this task to us, and he has empowered us to continue his work. In John 6, 13, the Bible says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak. And he will show you, he's going to show you things to come. Amen? Right. That's the Holy Spirit in us. Getting directions from the Father to work through us. The Holy Spirit is blessing men and women everywhere throughout the world. And it was prophesied that this would happen. The prophet Joel, all the way back in the Old Testament, chapter 2, verse 28, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. <clears throat> prophesy. Preach. Just a word that means a foretelling of the word of God. Be the mouthpiece of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's what a prophet is. Yep. Amen. Right. Jesus is ministering to the diseased, the sick, to those in darkness, and to all who will receive his blessings. He is using men and women that have been baptized in his spirit to bring this to pass. That's all of us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. All of us. We are without excuse. It is so marvelous that this can be done through the power of the spirit in the life of the believer. All because Jesus promised, I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. This is the last one. The last I will. This is as Christ relates to his coming again. The final I will of Jesus is found in John 14 verses 1 through 3. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. It is prophesied over 318 times in the Bible that Jesus said he will come again. There are two stages of his coming. Amen. First, he is going to come in the clouds to rapture the living and dead saints to meet him in the air. 
Amen. That's the first one. Then he is coming back to the earth. Touchdown. See, the first time he's coming in the clouds. Second time, touchdown. He is coming to the earth to rule and reign with the same saints that he raptured. He's going to rapture us. We're going to receive an incorruptible body. We're going to be just like him. Then we're going to come down here and wage war with him. Mm -hmm. You better just... get ready. This, this might make my whole heart just jump. I'm getting ready. We're going to lay waste to the enemy. Mm. Woo! What? Hallelujah! <laughs> oh! Yes. When Jesus comes in the clouds to catch away the living saints and those who have died in Christ, this is what we call the rapture of the church. The saints of God will have these vile bodies changed into a glorified body. Mm -hmm. Jesus will not set foot on the earth at this first phase of his coming. At which moment only the saints of God will see him. At that time, only we're going to see him. Yes. Oh my, mm -hmm. but there's going to be a time. The Lord tells us every eye. Every eye. Will Amen. At the end of the tribulation, Jesus will descend very slowly to earth so that every eye shall see him. Amen. Right. You see, the first time the word says in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Right. Poof, we're gone. We're out of here. And only we're going to see him. Oh, but when he comes back to beat the devil up, he coming slow. He want everybody to see him and his army of saints coming down here to vanquish the enemy. Mm -mm. I don't know about you, but my, 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 I can see me on the horsey now. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Say, y'all better come on, let's go get them! Ay, ay, ay. is going to see him. Mm. Living and looking for Christ to return in the clouds is the greatest comfort the redeemed of the Lord can have. Amen. Right. The world is filled with sadness and gloom and darkness and death, but the church of Jesus Christ is ready to rise up in power with redemption and righteousness through the resurrection and rapture. And our Lord Jesus said, because I live, ye shall live also. So in conclusion, thank God for the Lord's I wills. His I wills are a comfort and an assurance to all who believe in his power. In the book of Revelations, chapter 2 and chapter 3, Jesus said, I will, 28 times. He said, I will give thee a crown of life. I will come unto thee quickly. I will give him the morning star. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and his angels. I will write upon him a new name. Jesus. Jesus. We're going to have a new name, y'all. Amen. And Jesus already knows what it is because it's written in the Lamb's book of life. Yes. These are just a brief number of the references to his I wills in those chapters. If we will hear the word, believe, and receive the I wills of Christ into our heart, then we will be persuaded that he is able to perform his will in our lives. Amen? His purpose, he let us know, is to sup with each one of us. He has promised in Revelation to him who overcomes I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Let's look forward to taking our places in the kingdom. God bless you today for receiving the word. Amen.